Three years ago, Batman and Superman was announced in front of Hall H at San Diego Comic-Con and the world was ready to see the two most iconic comic book characters go head-to-head in a film inspired by Frank Miller's The Dark Knight Returns comic. A year later, it was revealed that the full title of the film was going to be Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice and this is where things changed. The added subtitle was a sign that this was going to be DC's move into world building, responding to the MCU with their own DCEU, DC Extended Universe, and my major worry was that they were rushing into it all. Fearing the actions of Superman, Henry Cavill, left unchecked and with the world not sure whether to accept him as a hero or not, Gotham's own Batman, Ben Affleck, takes on the Man of Steel in the Battle of the Ages. With the two at war with one another, a new threat arises as a result of Lex Luthor, Jesse Eisenberg, meddling with Kryptonian technology, placing mankind in greater danger than it ever has known before. Batman v Superman is a mess of a film, but that doesn't make it absolutely terrible. It's important to understand that there were definitely enjoyable moments in the film, it's just that the film isn't very well made, the problem stemming from the overblown story and Zack Snyder's direction. The film was originally written by DC stalwart David S. Goya with Academy Award winning writer Chris Torero joining to help after Ben Affleck was cast as Batman. Goya and Torero together have written a film that, for the first hour and a half, goes down a more interesting route for a comic book film, holding back on the action, reintroducing us to the characters from Man of Steel and introducing us to the Batman side of the story. There are some interesting ideas raised, however the story is a bit too clunky and feels as if you're doing a jigsaw puzzle but the pieces don't fit so you end up just jamming them into place. Then comes the last hour of the film, which ultimately feels rust due to the way the first half was written. That's where Snyder and his direction comes into play. He has an eye for the visual, sure, but just like Man of Steel, the pacing of the film is what let him down. The pacing in Batman v Superman is so unbalanced that the two and a half hour runtime is well and truly felt. The last hour absolutely flies by and this is where Snyder lays all his cards on the table. Batman and Superman finally face off and then team up with Wonder Woman to take on Doomsday, the creation of Lex Luthor. Unfortunately this is where the film disappointed me most. The fight that the whole film is based around is good while it lasts, but that's the problem, it doesn't last for long at all. We've been waiting for three years to see them fight and then that's all we get? Then it ends on one of the most painstakingly annoying pieces of writing in the entire film. I would have given good money to see the fight last a lot longer and the moment they team up shortens somewhat. Batman and Superman are suddenly best friends and team up with Wonder Woman, who I will discuss later, in one of the most horrifically CGI finales in any superhero film. It was fun to watch the carnage unfold, but it was just all over the place, as if There wasn't a director calling the shots. The film doesn't come without positives, mind. Ben Affleck's performance as both Bruce Wayne and Batman being the main one. Affleck's Dark Knight is probably the most loyal live-action version we've seen, and he really carries the film on his own at times. The fact they decided to write him as a man who has been donning the cape for 20 years works ever so well in his favour, giving this version of Batman a real sense of anger and determination to take Superman down. He gets the best moment of the film as well when he takes down a warehouse of bad guys, as seen in the trailer. I think anyone who originally slated the casting of Affleck will be eating their words by the end of the film. Batman getting such a prominent chunk of the film made me feel a little sorry for Henry Cavill in the role of Superman. I liked Cavill in Man of Steel and he does well with what he gets here. It just feels almost as if no one knows how to write Superman for the big screen, coming across as a bit of a side character instead. Maybe Snyder just doesn't understand the idea of Superman. Then there are the supporting players of the film, some familiar faces from Man of Steel and some new ones altogether. The best of the bunch is Lex Luthor, played by Jesse Eisenberg, who channels Heath Ledger's Joker combined with his Mark Zuckerberg from The Social Network. Eisenberg was another who faced a backlash when cast, and I think he brings an interesting new take on the character to this film. Gal Gadot shows up both as Diana Prince and Wonder Woman, the latter supposedly stealing the show for many people, yet I don't think she did enough to warrant that. I am interested to see what they do in her solo film next year. Amy Adams returns and feels utterly wasted as Lois Lane, while Jeremy Irons makes for a good Alfred. I did have a problem with how they tease the other members of the Justice League in this film, whether it be through dream sequences or Lex Luthor's confidential files that magically has the character's logos already established. It just felt forced. This is where I feel they're rushing into the Justice League and not taking a lesson from Marvel, taking the time to introduce them all in solo films first. I just don't know if they're going to pull it off, particularly if Zack Snyder is directing. The work of Hans Zimmer and Junkie XL is worth noting as well. I'm glad to hear the Superman theme return from Man of Steel and the Wonder Woman theme fits absolutely brilliantly with her little cameo. I am disappointed that I couldn't really distinguish a Batman theme, so I guess I'll just have to listen through without the film and see how it sounds. For a big event film that was surrounded by so much hype and anticipation, Batman v Superman Dawn of Justice is incredibly underwhelming. 
My advice to Warner Brothers and DC is if they want to have a cinematic universe that can compete with Marvel on all levels, we must get another director in for the Justice League films because Zack Snyder is way out of his depth on this one. <laughs>